Come on, we try number 45. That's a good picture. Glasses to appear bright when 450 nanometers light is incidentally normal. Incidentally normal. Mm -hmm. We know that N is bigger, the N of the glass is bigger than uh, the N of the air, so there's not going to be any uh, inversion. Is that correct? To assume? Until we get to the second. There you go. That's right. So that's right. So will there be an inversion at the first surface? No. No, not when we're reflected from the first surface. Will there be inversion at the second surface? Yes. Yeah, because now we're moving to the higher end. Um, we know that glass, the table had a bunch of different ends for glass, but they were all about 1.5 or 1.6. Whatever they are, they're definitely bigger than air. Mm -hmm. Remember that one is the minimum. So you're right. Now there's going to be that one inversion. Okay, good. And then we know uh, within our air medium, there is not going to be any change in lambda because it's over one. Ah, good point. Okay. So we would just use m plus one half times lambda. But we get in the habit of putting n there because it's yeah. always no. Be your, your analysis is perfect. Your analysis is perfect. Um, are the let's see. Yeah, your analysis is uh, perfect over here. So in this case, um, because uh, usually we have to uh, put an N here because we usually have a wavelength that's smaller than it is in the air, but here the film is the air, so the wavelength would be the same. It is good to get in the habit of knowing that in general it's lambda over N, but in this case, what would N be? One. Yeah, so that shows that you were right, that this wavelength will be the same as the, the general wavelength in the air. Okay, that's, that seems like a very good start. Now we want to uh, find the minimum of the lens. And the minimum in this case, I guess, could, uh, well, we want to find constructive and destructive. So we're going to have two different minimums, one in this and a zero. Is that correct? You take a look at the problem? Because it wants us to find it. Uh, ah, that's right. Good point. Yes. Here's dark, and then when it appears, uh, and it just mm -hmm. uh, it appears bright. Okay, yeah, I forgot about that. So that's right. So how are we going to handle that? So we're going to have to solve it for m at 0 and then m at 1. Is that correct? Let's talk that through a little more. And then what we're going to have to solve at m, it, uh, the, the one we have up there right now would be appropriate for, uh, for destructive. Let's work that out. Okay. Well, let's start by figuring out what it should be for constructive interference. 
But you're right, we're going to need to do both constructive and destructive. into account the inversions, would we be in phase or half a cycle out of phase? Half a cycle out of phase. Right. So what's the smallest path length difference that will get us back in phase? Um, m plus one half. Yeah. The smallest one would just be one half. Yeah. So that means that the general form here, we're going to have to add that extra half wavelength to get ourselves back into phase. Okay. Since the inversions are putting us out of phase, we're going to have to add an extra half wavelength to get us into phase. So actually, you had a very good start to this problem. The one thing that you didn't do is that when you wrote down this equation, you didn't write whether it was for constructive or destructive interference. We always have to write down when we write down our equation, is that for constructive or destructive interference? Because we know that the same equation could be either constructive or destructive, depending on the type of problem we're working on. So we can't just memorize that. OK, so that would give us this formula here. All right, and now we have to figure out what are the possible m's. What's the smallest possible m for this equation? Zero or one? The smallest possible name is, uh, is zero. Could you really have a zero here? It's perfectly fine to have a zero as long as that doesn't give you a, a film with zero thickness. Sure. But that's perfectly fine here. I, I should have said the path length difference here would be 2d, as usual. It's perfectly OK to put a zero here, because that doesn't force you to have a zero thickness film. Sure. So we could put in an m of zero. That just means that there's a, a path length difference of 1 half wavelength. But that would definitely get us back into phase. So it's always important to write down the possible m's. All right, so that's our formula for constructive interference. So let's go right ahead and write down our formula for destructive interference. What will that be? Um, well, it would be 2d equals m times lambda, because that would keep us out of phase. That's right. Uh, to be technical, I'll say lambda over n, but it makes no difference here, because n is 1. Very good. Uh, that's right. And the way you put that is right. The inversions were putting us half a cycle out of phase. Uh, well, if we just keep going complete whole wavelengths, we're going to stay out of phase. Uh, and now, what's the first m in the series? Zero or one? The first m would be one. Yeah. Why can't we use zero here? Because that would force us to have a zero length for the film, and that doesn't make sense. So that's something we always have to think about. Okay. So here's our two equations. Now we can continue. Constructive for us for us to um, for it to appear bright, we need a minimum of a, uh, a minimum thickness of an air layer of 112.5 nanometers. And for it to appear dark, it would need uh, a minimum of 225 nanometers of air layer. Okay. Because this came from uh, the equation we had for constructive, and this came from the equation for destructive. 
Um, and uh, how do we know to plug in 0 and 1? Because they were asking for the minimum thicknesses. So we should plug in the minimum Fs over here. Okay. All right. So um, each of these was a little bit harder. So we had a little trouble coming up with these equations here. I think you saw there would be one inversion again. That was good. Um, I think at first you thought that since we had to do both constructive and destructive, I think you were treating those as different m's in the same equation. Uh, but no, all of these m's are for the same equation, are for constructive interference, and these are for destructive. So there's totally different equations for constructive and destructive. Okay, and that gives us this. And uh, that's apparent when you yeah. look at both sides of the equation. Right. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, you made, uh, you're getting in the habit of making good pictures that show all the different mediums over here, so that's good. Uh, all right, so coming up with equations a little, was a little tricky. Everything else here uh, went pretty well.